In this video we're going to look at how the mating is done to produce this four bar mechanism and we're also going to look more at uh, mirroring and how to set up the mirrored parts to be slightly different than the other parts. So uh, first let's remind ourselves how this little mechanism works. Uh, as I zoom in uh, I've set uh, in order to get the servo arm to move the servo subassembly has to be set with this little box selected. Uh, that puts it in flexible mode. Uh, if I hover over here, then I click it again, it would make it into rigid mode and you couldn't move the arm. So we're in flexible mode, so it'll work. Uh, you just click on the arm and then I'm, um, I'm holding down on the mouse button while I move the mouse and that lets me rotate the arm. Uh, if you want to always return it to a square uh, vertical position, the best way is when you release it, just hit Control Z and that will set it to its initial spot. Okay, I've removed the little uh, link that links these two just so you can see better. Uh, first let's talk about how to, what's the best order to add the parts in something like this. And with the last model I started with the servo itself because I knew that the servo placement would dictate where this arm landed and the location of that arm and in particular that surface would dictate where this part needed to be. Uh, in this case uh, it's not necessarily uh, working that way because I knew that the link connecting that pin to that pin, well that didn't have to be exactly in the same plane. As long as it was close it was still going to drive it. So uh, I wanted to make, um, well the, the advantage of this type of design is that the gate, uh, the door is uh, basically symmetric left and right sides. There's a pin on this side, there's a pin on that side. There's a plate on this side and it's almost the same as the plate on that side. So I started this one by making the door constrained to the center line of the part. So if I go into its mates, you can see this coincident mate right here. That is the uh, center plane of the door and the center plane of the bottom and that makes sure that when the door rotates it doesn't move left and right. So with the door symmetric uh, to the overall assembly I know that uh, I can do left-right symmetry for the pin and the side plate without any issue. Uh, the constraints of the, these plates to the door those are set up very similar to the last one. Uh, let's take a look at those though. Uh, getting the constraints uh, logical and correct and not over constrained is all of the work in uh, achieving this kind of a mechanism that actually works. So let's see what the constraints are. First we have that that face and that are locked together as you'd expect. Then we have a distance constraint just like the last model that sets the fore aft position of the door. Uh, constraint for the top. You notice all the constraints between these are locked to each other not to global features in the model. Uh, that's for the pin, a concentric constraint. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. And then there's a distance constraint saying where will the servo mount relative to the pin. So that is uh, important because that's going to determine how the mechanism works. Now let's talk about the pin. Uh, this pin here this was set just with one constraint, one mate, and it's the lock mate. So that pin is locked to the side at a particular spot. All I did was um, drag the pin around until I thought it looked uh, in a reasonable spot. I didn't even dimension it. Uh, for this case, when you're laser cutting something like this, um, dimensions aren't critical. So uh, it's locked in there and then mold cavity will produce the hole for that pin. And now you've got a fixed point that the mechanism can move around. Next thing is the placement of the servo. Uh, and I, I knew that for this mechanism to work I needed to have this face of that plate to be in a reasonably close to the same plane as that face. And so um, this block will determine that and in this case it took two thicknesses of material. So this is 0.22 from that point to that point. Uh, for the servo mount. And so the servo mount in this case uh, just goes around it and it's otherwise made uh, similarly to, as the last one. 
the fore aft position of the servo is just to give a reasonable uh, link length between this pin and that pin. Uh, not too short, not too long. Uh, so if it were too short, then uh, this mechanism could actually hit the body. And if it's too long, the link between them might buckle. So uh, th this one happens to be uh, a couple inches or less. The next question is where to the pivot locations go. So these two pivots, I would suggest trying to get them more or less to the same vertical height. Uh, these pivots, as we talked in the first video, they want to start out to be 45 degrees, very roughly, uh, oriented 45 degrees away from that pin to the front. And the same thing for this one. So with this one unlocked, you can see the uh, servo, if I right click here, that's selected. So it's, it's uh, in flexible mode. I'm going to be able to move this. So the starting position, I pulled that arm over to about there. Uh, so it's roughly at a 45 degree angle. And so it's 45 from there to there and 45 from there to there. And that makes, of course, a par parallelogram. To create this pin in space, uh, that was done with an extra extrusion attached to there. So if I go down here, uh, it's the same part as before. Uh, but that's an extrusion. That boss extrude takes uh, the material from that plane over here and moves it up. And then there's a cut extrude for a small uh, hole. That's a small hole so that you can thread a, a small screw into that. And then the red piece is a placeholder to cut out a larger hole so that the link that's going to go between the two will have a clearance hole. Okay, so that locates that position, that pin. And now the link to connect the two pins. Uh, there's two ways you could make this. Uh, the, probably the simplest straightforward way would be to measure the center line distance from there to there. And for this, we would want to turn on the temporary axes right there. Okay, and I would use the measure command. So I'm going to evaluate the measure and click on this axis. And then I hold the control and I click on that axis and I get this distance between them, 0.886. So just in this position as it happens to start out, which is uh, reasonably 45s on a parallelogram, I can make a new part where I have two holes that are that far apart, center to center, and that part would assemble on these. But there's another way to make it, which is kind of slick, uh, and that is to use a part that make a part within the assembly. And in the assembly tab, we go to insert components and you see here a new part. So this is a new part that's creating within the context of an assembly. It's a little bit different way of making things, but it has some advantages. Uh, you may not know what to do here. Uh, there's a little message here, select the face or plane on which to position the new part. So that's what it's looking for. And so I would either choose that surface or that surface. And to choose between the two, uh, I'm going to look at it on end. And I can see that the uh, servo arm sticks out a little bit further than that one does. So that would be the appropriate plane for the part. So I'm going to pick this plane. OK, now it's ready to make this component. Uh, so this menu is a little different here. You can see that it put us right into the sketch mode. OK. And this is uh, indicating we are in the edit component portion of an assembly. So I can start by making a sketch, or I can start by going to Features. Uh, actually, no, it says we need to do the sketch first. OK, so in this case, we'll sketch first, and then we'll make the extrusion. Uh, this is a very handy tool, sketching tool, for this kind of a part. It's called a straight slot. And you can see it goes by the two center points of the slot. So I'm going to click that. And now it's looking for uh, the two center lines to draw the uh, slot. And I've got my axes turned on. Remember, that's under here, the temporary axes. And with that uh, axis, I can see one point there. It appears right there. That would be an appropriate point to pick. So I click once there. And now you can see it's ready to draw this. I hover around here looking for the other point, and there it is. That's on the axis, so I click that. 
And now I pull away from that line, and you can see it's going to make this nifty little link. So um, visually, how far, how big to make it? Certainly that's too big. That's probably too small. Um, I'm going to click it here and then tell you why I chose that. Uh, a, maybe a, a rule of thumb is to give your cell as much distance between there and there as there is pin diameter. And that will make a, um, a pretty strong slot without being, uh, link without being too big. Okay, so that is my sketch. And it knows to put, uh, we're going to have to put holes manually in it later. But uh, at least it's the right link shape. So let's set check to the slot. And now we have the sketch, but we don't yet have an extrusion. And so for that, let's go to the features bar. And now we do have access to the extruded boss command. So I'm going to click that. And since the sketch was already selected, it used it as the basis for this extrusion. Uh, this is going to be 0.11 thick, or just another piece of wood. And I'm going to say check. And now we have a link connecting those two pens, and it's exactly uh, the right uh, length for that. So uh, the only thing left I need to do is um, get out of Edit Component, but before I do that, why don't I put the holes in for the two red placeholders? Let's go to Insert, Mold, Cavity, and then I click on that pin and that pin, and I hit the check, and now I should have holes in that part. Now you can see it's named it just arbitrarily part two as part of robot assembly. Uh, we can rename that to something better by uh, right clicking and then rename part. And instead of part two, I'm going to say the link. And to, to finish the process, I need to say uh, click on the edit component to get out of that mode. And when I save it, it should save that part in the same folder. Uh, you want to verify that, but just to be safe, uh, when we're all done with this, I would use pack and go to make sure I get that part placed in the correct folder. We also need to constrain this part so that it, uh, SolidWorks understands the function of it. Right now it's a part with holes, but it doesn't know that those holes are joints. So we'll uh, add some constraints for this. And so, for example, if I were to take this pin, I can move this and it's going to move it uh, away from the pin that I intend. So I'm going to hit Control z to put it back where it belongs. And so to set these constraints, I'm going to open up this, and then open up the mates for that. And you can see it has um, automatically put one mate in. Uh, this one fixes the new link to the arm, and that was just done as a part of the process I did. But we don't want this kind of a mate because it won't allow us to actually move things properly. So it'll, it'll fix it instead of being a mechanism. So I'm going to right click and delete this. We'll get a warning, but this is okay. And now we're going to tell it how that link is actually mated to the assembly. It's of course mated by the hole lining up with an axis uh, on each end and then a face lining up with an opposite face. So let's do that. So I click on mate and then I zoom in here, and if I click there, you see the little pop-up? It says boss extrude of the link, so that lets me know that it's the link that it's grabbing there, and not the red pin. Okay, so I want to grab something on the link, and then I'm going to choose this axis, and that must be on the red pin. And you, so you can see we have a something part of the link, and we have an axis part of the door edge. So I green check to that. That's one of our constraints. Next constraint, very similarly, uh, hold there, and you see that it's part of the link. Click that, and then click this, green check, and I just need one more constraint, and that's to keep it from sliding off. I'm going to go that to that, and that's going to be a coincident constraint to keep things on plane, and that should do it. And with that, we should have a moving mechanism. So let's check it out. Uh, yes, it worked. Now, usually when you're you're first doing your mechanism type stuff, um, it's not going to work. There's some constraint that you probably set elsewhere in the model that fixed it um, and prevents motion. So, for example, if that plane were by chance uh, constrained or mated to that plane, nothing could move. 
and that's true all the way down the line. So you just have to be careful about setting your mates up to each other uh, so that there's only one degree of freedom, one type of movement that can be done. And this is not to say that your SOLIDWORKS model has to work in this way. Uh, if you find a derision and you can't fix the problem, as long as you can build it and that the mechanism will work in practice, that's what we're really going for at this stage. There are a few more issues in this model that we're going to talk about, but I'm going to make another video for that, and it will cover mirroring, the different types of mirroring, and how to make differences between the left and right parts.